Welcome guys, this is Prasenjit Ghosh and welcome to the Masterful Master. Today we'll be discussing about a literary work on the sublime written by Cassius Longinus. On the sublime is arguably written by Cassius Longinus, though it is speculative. It is a first century text and this text is a part of literary criticism. Now what is literary criticism? Literary criticism is not about criticizing any work of literature. It just means that you are providing an opinion about that work. Longinus is one of the most important literary critic when it comes to Roman criticism. Longinus is also known as the first romantic critic by James Scott because of his views on imagination and passion which are similar to that of romantic writers. Longinus was inspired by Plato just as Horace was inspired by Aristotle. On the sublime is the work on literary criticism and in this work Longinus talks about what is good writing. The goal according to Longinus is to achieve the sublime. In philosophy, sublime is the quality of greatness. Another quality of sublime is that it can't be measured, initiated and calculated. On the sublime is written in epistolary form. An epistolary work is usually written through letters or journal entries or the combination of both. Longinus dedicated the work to Terentianus, a public figure in ancient Rome who was known for being cultured. In the 16th century, the treatise was published by Francis Robertello. According to Longinus, the function of literature cannot be restricted to instruct, delight or persuade. There is also a willful requirement of readers in order to be instructed, delighted or persuaded. The sources of sublime are of two kinds, inborn sources and acquirable sources. According to Longinus, five features is present in any work which is true sublime. The first one is grandeur of thoughts. Grandeur of thoughts means greatness of thoughts. A writer can only write a beautiful work only if his soul is filled with grandeur of great thoughts. A thief won't be able to write a great work as he will lack in his thoughts. The second feature is noble diction. Now what is diction? Diction is the verbal order that is rhythm, rhyme or harmony. Use of words, rhythm or rhyme should be good in order to achieve sublimity. The third feature is dignified word arrangement. A good work will always have a good choice and arrangement of words. That means proper striking words will hold the attention of the readers. The words should be such that it imparts grandeur and beauty to the text. Strong emotion and passion. Emotion should be strong and it should be naturally expressed in lofty and elevated language so that it can move the readers with pleasure and persuasion. The fifth feature of true sublime is figure of speech. A poet should use figure of speech in such a way that it is not mechanical and not forceful. They should be used genuinely. The first feature of false sublime is use of pompous or bombastic words. Pompous means show off and bombastic means big or out of place words. Use of these words will affect the natural beauty of the text. Childishness How does childishness become a barrier? When a person is not making proper sense, is not writing in a mature way, and uses childish themes, only then it becomes a barrier. Defects of style. Lack of sincerity in work is another barrier in achieving sublimity. Lack of passion and emotion also becomes a barrier in achieving sublimity. Unless and until one writes with passion and emotion, true sublimity cannot be achieved. With this, we come to the end of this lecture. If you enjoyed learning, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.